um, if we could start with um, Room from the uh, Climate Camp, if you've got five minutes, uh, if you'd yeah. like to uh, say something about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks, Evelyn, and good to see so many faces. And I have to say, um, it's really refreshing to hear talks about something else than the bloody monarchy. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, yeah, like my name is Wung. I'm from Climate Camp Scotland. We held a climate camp just like a month ago um, up north in Aberdeen in the area of Torrey, where we um, like like trespassed with the entire camp on an area that was supposed to go to the uh, fossil fuel industry, um, taking away the glass green space and erecting an energy transition zone for the fossil fuel industry. And we um, permitted mass trespass, mass civil disobedience uh, with over 100 people into the Aberdeen City Harbour um, at that time and with smaller acts of vandalism to accompany that. Um, so that's kind of like where I'm coming from. And um, I don't really um, have loads to add because you two talked about quite a lot of important things. Um, one thing, I'm going to talk about the monarchy anyways, right? Because um, as you might have noticed, our leaders have been absent all summer, like par UK Parliament has been suspended for months and months, not doing anything. And now they're going on break again because this they use this uh, passing of the Queen to fabricate this myth building exercise while there is a cost of living crisis on an energy crisis on. And uh, like we just passed a massive heat wave that killed people in England, in Wales, in Portugal, in Spain. Um, so we have so many massive crises and our leaders have nothing else to do than to just like go away and shake hands for like yet another 10 days and with all legislation um like suspended and i'm just saying that because they the, our leaders don't deserve our respect they don't deserve our politeness and they don't take us seriously unless they're forced to do so um unless we go out on strike um, unless we disrupt business as usual. And that's what needs to happen in the next coming months, weeks, and years. Um, otherwise, um, there will not be progress. There will just be more stalling and misbuilding and gaslighting coming from our leaders. And I think, yeah, Pete, Neil, you covered almost everything, but you should be less polite about things. And that goes for all of us, I think. We should practice disrespecting our leaders because they don't respect us. Um, the other thing I really liked what you guys said is that this is a housing crisis. Um, as yeah, as you might remember, the British public suddenly doesn't remember anymore, but we had a massive heat wave um, that melted train lines, um, killed people in England um, and across Europe. Um, and yeah, and that is caused by bad housing. And same in this winter, um, people will not be able to afford to heat. And that the root cause of that is bad housing because the UK has set up a system that is dependent on corporate landlords so much that we can't afford to fix these things. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of like what we need to do um, to tackle, to like provide good housing, decent housing for everyone. And if we don't have that, we can't, we can neither address the cost of living crisis nor the effects of the climate crisis that is coming for us all. And um, yeah, I actually wanted to say something more about like um, strikes in the oil and gas sector. Um, I don't know whether I still have time. Maybe I'll end on that. Um, so currently, there's also um, um, a couple of strikes happening, wild cut strikes in the oil and gas sector, both in Grangemouth and Osmoran, and two of the biggest polluters across the central belt in Scotland. And um, we are trying to support them, um, but we are kind of like reluctant because despite a lot of like commonality, there's a lot of differences and a lot of like mistrust between uh, workers and climate activists still in the sector. So that is something that you guys from Scott A3 can really, really help us with, to build ties with them, to like connect us with them, to see where the commonalities, where the differences that we need to bridge. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll end on that. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Wong. That's, that's brilliant. Um, well timed. Uh, so uh, our next speaker then um, is um, Zareen from the Muslim Women's Association of Edinburgh. Um, I can't see you now, Zareen, if you could, maybe I'm on the wrong page at this point. Uh, you can't see me? Oh, there you are. Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, so um, the Muslim Women's Association works with the community. So we're the ones who um, would be aware of the refugees coming into the city and uh, what kind of things uh, they need. 
And every crisis, we're uh, looking after people who can't afford their rents, are in threat of being evicted. And it just seems like it's got worse and worse. Um, people on universal credit not being able to afford uh, like the cost of living now. And if it's going to go up, where is that going to leave, leave everyone? So um, it's all very well to have a lovely community to lean on in these times. But I've been very frustrated that um, with the increase in food banks and everything over the last decade, that we haven't been able to tap into. If people are so generous and they're given food banks and we know, we all know somebody who needs to use a food bank, um, how comes we aren't really coming together and really using our resources and our energies um, to fight back on this? So I know there's great work done in North Edinburgh on, on things like this. Um, so in, in the things that we're, you know, it's, it's very worrying um, because it, uh, if you've come across Terry McAllister, I know Scotty Three did a meeting, uh, he spoke, uh, the links between, direct links between government and the oil, in, the fossil fuel industry is completely direct. Either the fossil fuel industry people provide, the CEOs become advisors to the cabinet or cabinet ministers become CEOs fossil fuel industry. So these last uh, few decades have proved to us that they just look after their own and they're not, they don't give a damn through all of through the, lock, the last two years of COVID. They don't give a damn about ordinary people. Um, and it's, I'm very, very angry about it all. Uh, and I really would like to join, have our uh, group join any uh, campaigns that we can lend ourselves to and raise awareness about things that can be done. Uh, the numbers, when, when Neil and Pete quote numbers, money, it just, it means, it, it has begun to mean nothing to me because whenever they want to, whenever there's a political will to do something, they find the money. They literally print money that they don't mm. have. So um, it, 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 it doesn't make sense to me that that the poorest of, uh, of the nation will have to pay for this. Because if they can make the money, just make the money, why does anyone have to owe it back? This is, this is um, you know, my rantings. I'm not really uh, saying anything concrete, um, but it's, and again, with the Pakistan floods, it's the worst floods uh, in the country. Uh, more, my friends are in the, uh, my friend's families are in the Punjab, which hasn't been affected, but everybody is so aware it's the biggest, uh, you know, thing that people are donating to um, because of this, this crisis. So we're, we're aware about the links to, um, what can I say, to cl climate crisis, linking to the misery that people are suffering in the global south. Mm. Um, We've been doing meetings and trying and uh, trying to raise awareness with uh, with all the other campaigns on this and the cost of living is scary for people it's a terrible time when people have worked really hard they end up living single uh, by by themselves and just hand to mouth um a neighbor had uh, in edinburgh had broken a leg in june and if it wasn't for community she would would not be looked after. There isn't any resources for her to uh, depend on. And that, it, everyone everyone must know someone who, who needs help. And it's just, um, I really need, <laughs> I really need to, to join any group that's going to be doing anything because I'm very, very angry. And I don't, I don't swear much, uh, but yes, it's, a, it's one of those situations. I don't feel like I'm saying anything particularly different or, or useful. Um, I'm just looking at the notes um, <laughs> Neil and uh, Pete were saying. But it's just the it's bonkers, 130 billion suddenly available. And uh, they could, uh, and the fixed price is absolutely what Pete's saying. They could fix the prices. It's not, it's not, it's not magic. It's just sensible 
economics. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I better stop there because I'm just going to send into. Um, yes, you've done perfectly as a matter of fact, Serene. You're spot on for five minutes. So thank you very much. <laughs> Um, yes, thank you. That's that's great. So um, the third speaker then is Phoebe um, from Just Stop Oil. Uh, I've lost you again, Phoebe. <laughs> oh, you want to talk? Oh, there you are. Yes, hooray. Um, yes. So um, uh, um, over to you. Ah, boy, yeah. Thank you very much for for having me along. Um, yeah, I completely agree with with everything that has been said, and it's so really unfathomable situation that that we all find ourselves in um yeah I think what kind of struck me there what Zareen was saying is like at this point you know so many things like COVID and all these things that keep happening like we're coming together and it's community that's like it's really hard but we're getting through it and we're getting through it and I think you're right when you feel like what at what point do we say no it's not okay like the fact that all these food banks have all opened up, you know, throughout this 12 years, you know, of conservative rule and all these policies before, like, it's not okay that that's what we have to do. There should be things there to support us. And um, yeah, the, the money as well, I think. So our our campaign is very kind of, it's, it's one demands. Um, so as Neil was saying, we're like a direct action group and it's one demand that, the UK government um, commit to no new oil and gas licenses and no future projects. Um, and for us, that's that's a cutoff that is really important. And you know, as Pete was saying, if we leave it to the oil and gas companies, mm -hmm. you know, it will take another 20 years if we're lucky for the kind of change and the kind of transition that we know we need to actually come around and the way we kind of look at it and the people I work with is that, you know, it's can feel like a really impossible big ask of our leaders, but we know what the solutions are. And the scientists have told us the solutions for decades, you know, if we're funding the right things, the money is going to the right place. If it had been going to the right place two months ago, so many vulnerable homes could have been insulated and that's just in two months. And I think fighting for that cutoff for us, that's why we've chosen that, like pushing really, really, really hard for that so that we get that win. They can't keep investing in that and they cannot keep funding oil and gas in this country. And I guess that's why it's such a big thing because we know how far they're in the pockets of these companies and how much these companies are used to their power and just being able to demand the oil prices and the energy prices in this country. Um, I think I was, it really, really hit me when, because obviously, we've, as, as I think people said, we've been waiting around for a new government to actually make a decision and actually do something. And then not that we expected much. And then you just see Liz Trust stand there getting asked by the opposition, what, what, why not windfall tax? Mm -hmm. Why not Why not implement that like, you know, many other countries? And the way she just swept it aside, she's like, no, I, I will not do that. I will not do that. And it just, the last kind of, you know, naive bit of hope within me was just like, God, okay, we've really got to, we've really got to fight for this. And we really have to not let them take another inch because, you know, they, they do not care. Um, but I think, yeah. So obviously what we're doing is we've been blocking infrastructure. We've been as a protest room, you know, much like they did at climate camp, just seeing what is impactful, what actually pushes through that business as usual. Um, and it is difficult, but I think, I mean, what I do and my colleagues do, we, we speak to people on the street a lot. We kind of, we leaflet and we speak to people and that's the most important part of my job. And I think, you know, 98% people I speak to are worried obviously they're but they get it they understand the connections between you know what's why we can't pay our bills and why there's this flooding in Pakistan and why can't we just make better decisions and it's very obvious for a lot of us you know it's yeah 
Um, sorry, I'm just looking at what everything else was said. Just, just to, yeah. One more so, minute. One yeah. or two more minutes. Yeah. No, you're doing great. <laughs> um, Very relevant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think at the moment, the knowledge that we all know what the problem is and we're all feeling it. And there's just so many movements and groups like yourselves. And um, we were at the climate festival in Edinburgh and we see the union striking and all this kind of stuff. There is that momentum and there is that power and that realization that we've got to give it our best best shot. And, you know, it's difficult to be hopeful and to be empowered right now, but we've got it. We've got a good chance because the one thing I kind of know about Liz Trust right now. She doesn't know what she's doing. And if we all put all that pressure on it, she, they U-turn all the time. It's just whether they will do the right, whether we can get them to do it in time. Um, but yeah, it's it great to see you all here. And thanks for all your brilliant expertise and words. And I've run it all down and I'll be, <laughs> um, yeah, it's invaluable stuff like this. So thank you very much for having us.